All right, hello and welcome to the latest presentation of the Rift Valley webinar series. My name is Anne Kruijt and I'm the host for today's talk. If you're participating in the live webinar, you can submit questions or comments in the chat module of the Zoom application at any time during the presentation or ask a voice question by raising your hand once the presentation is complete. So today's speaker is Roland Kiesling. Roland is a professor of African linguistics at the University of Hamburg. He specializes in documentation and analysis of African languages with specific interest in phonetic transcription, morphosemantics, and language change. He has extensive experience in the field as well as numerous publications to his name and has worked on the southern varieties of Cushitic, Nilotic, Niger Congo, and Khoisan languages. So please join me in welcoming Roland as he gives us talk more on the lexical history of bloods in Bantu, East Africa. Yes, thank you very much, Anne, for your um, friendly introduction. Um, the lexical history of blood in East Africa. Uh, this is interesting from uh, various uh, perspectives. From an anthropological perspective, it sheds light on practices of avoidance and subsistence uh, for um, the reconstruction of a language and cultural contact, lexicalizations of blood, may allow us to retrace historical contacts within and beyond Bantu in a more fine-grained manner. And under a general cognitive perspective, it will be interesting to detect lexical differentiation in the domain of blood. And finally, for historical linguistics in general, the Bantu case provides a counterexample to the universal resilience of lexicalization of the concept blood against lexical renewal, such as borrowing. Uh, so terms for blood in Bantu generally, and in East Bantu in particular, form a complex patchwork, which uh, yeah, calls for interpretation. Um, bits and pieces of this patchwork are scattered in a variety of works, and it seems that no one has bothered to put uh, the patchwork together and give the whole picture uh, from the onomasiological uh, point of view, possibly with the single exception of Bastin, 1997, and following her, Bostoon, 2005, who focus on two widespread Bantu terms for blood, that is Magila and Magadi. Under a, a general per, a Bantu perspective, they provide plausible etymologies and explanations for the lexical renovation of the concept within Bantu. Mainly, uh, they identify um, avoidance as an underlying motivation. Now, independently of this, the concept blood has been relexicalized by borrowing from a southern Cushitic source in Bantu northeastern Africa, including the Rift Valley, probably via the adoption of cattle keeping culture and economy, which has been proposed by Eret uh, mainly. And what I aim here is uh, a slightly higher degree of resolution of the picture, uh, including terms with, uh, with fairly restricted local uh, distributions, hoping that you might have suggestions concerning their etymologies, maybe. And uh, another issue is semantic differentiation in the domain of blood, which is an aspect uh, that has been neglected to some extent and which would be needed for retracing semantic developments. And as a kind of a counterbalance to all invocations of avoidance and taboo, uh, the economical perspective needs to be added explicitly to the list of motivations of lexical renewal of uh, the term for blood in Bantu. Now, in um, the entire Bantu sphere, the concept blood is not represented by a single root with cognate reflexes from zones A through S, uh, contrary to the, uh, the comparatively closed genetic relationship among Bantu in general. So Bantu Lexical Reconstructions Online, BLR, uh, recognizes 11 roots for the meaning blood with different 
patterns of distribution across Bantu. And as we increase the degree of resolution in the northeastern Bantu zone, more terms must be included. So we get a total of at least 18 uh, terms which have been listed in this table. And uh, they are roughly sorted according to their distribution along the Klein Northwest versus rest and uh, broad, uh, broadly also according to the coverage of zones. Um, what observations can be made from this table? Well, uh, first of all, we can see the general lexical proliferation across Bantu uh, more clearly, which is at odds with the general internal cohesion and density of Bantu on the one hand, and uh, on the other hand, with claims about the stability of items of basic vocabulary in which the concept blood ranks high. So for example, rank, uh, rank seven on the Leipzig Jakarta word list of basic uh, vocabulary, that is. Mm, and lexical fragmentation reaches its peak in the Northeast, roughly comprising the Bantu zones D, E, F, G, and J, including the Rift Valley, which is of course the area uh, of Bantu encounter with Eastern Sudanic, ni especially Nilotic and uh, Cushitic speaking groups, as has been recognized. And um, some of these routes have a broader geographical de uh, distribution. Others are more restricted, uh, suggesting later innovations either from internal, so internal sources, as in the case of uh, Dacho, for example, or Dasso, or from borrowing, uh, which is the case uh, with Sagama and Sakame. And even some of the, the more widespread roots do not seem to have blood as their primary meaning historically, as in the case of Magila and Magadi, uh, since both terms rather, have rather transparently been derived from the verb gil to avoid and uh, from the noun gadi, which means palm oil respectively, and this indicates that blood must have been conceptualized and reconceptualized uh, repeatedly in the context of cultural taboos or avoidance uh, restrictions via um, periphrastic strategies or, and via metaphor. Uh, but um, let us look at the items individually before I point out some uh, suggestions and some conclusions and maybe guidelines for future work. So this is the first uh, term, reflexes uh, of this uh, term, gadi um, or yadi actually, are distributed across eastern and southern, uh, the southern east and eastern zones with an absence in the northwest and uh, also in the southwest. And this is the term which is transparently derived from palm oil. Um, yeah, this uh, by metaphor, probably motivated by a taboo. Um, that's all what I want to say on this. Uh, for illustration now, the next term, dungo, Mm, this item is restricted to the northwest, that is the zones A, A, B, and C, nowhere else, and no etymology other than blood has been proposed. And in zone C, it develops another meaning, a uh, blood pact, that is. The next term is uh, Gida with a western and northern distribution in uh, yeah, quite a number of zones. It is transparently derived from a verb gid or gil to avoid. So in class six, it originally had the notion or must have had the notion of avoided liquid, something like that. Um, 
terms deriving from a protobantu dopa have a general eastern distribution uh, with this term no etymology other than blood has been proposed as far as i can see but uh, scanning um, bantu lexical reconstructions for potential sources items such as the ones given in on the top might be candidates so we have dop uh, to dip or soak or dob with a voiced uh, plosive to be wet which might be candidates uh ninga is another term with um a wider a distribution uh in zones E, F, H, and K. So it's the Northeast uh, and the West. For this term, no etymology other than blood has been detected or given so far. Okay. Um, these uh, were the more widespread terms. Now it is interesting to see that there is a diversity of forms for the meaning blood in the northeastern Bantu zone, each with a more restricted distribution, adding up to a very fragmented picture. Uh, probably the most prominent and comparatively widespread of these two uh, uh, of these are the two items, uh, Sagama and Sakame which must have been borrowed from a southern Cushitic source. And so here we see a sagama with some reflexes, uh, which, is, which are basically found in the lacustrine area, that is zone J, and one attestation in zone D, uh, sagama. And, um, the other term, or the other southern Cushitic uh, source term is Sakame, probably borrowed from the same source item. In this case, it is uh, Tsakame, Proto-West Rift, with a slightly different, or with slightly different adaptations of the initial ejective affricate and the medial ejective uvula stop throughout the zones E, F, G, and an occasional attestation in P even, which uh, might be controversial though. Um, well, the background to these two borrowings, Sagama and Sakame, uh, could be reconstructed with a comparatively high degree of resolution in a model which integrates both cultural, um, economic, or, and even yeah, linguistic details, of course. And indeed, the Southern Cushitic provenience of these two roots had been or has been recognized since long, and also the context of borrowing, that is the adoption of the practice of drawing blood from cattle for consumption. Actually, it belongs or both belong to a whole bundle of southern um, Cushitic sourced lexical items in the domain of cattle economy and animal husbandry transferred to Eastern Bantu languages uh, triggered by economical motives rather than avoidance, actually. However, the southern Cushitic source form and its semantic derivation has not been identified properly so far, uh, as I think. Uh, Eret traces both items back to the proto, to his proto Southern Cushitic reconstruction, Sak, blood, uh, based on two items from East Rift, actually, that is Kwadza Sauko and Asach Saaka and the Ma'a items, and, uh, which are mm, Sakame for normal Bugu and uh, the Inambugu Sakko. And uh, according to Martin, the 
a normal Bugu item, Sakame is rather borrowed from Pare, whereas the inner Bugu term Sako has been derived from the normal Bugu term by uh, truncation rule uh, plus pseudo suffixing of O. So the remaining East Drift attestations, uh, yeah, we are left with them. However, they give us no clue as to the source of the ending ame in these terms, or ama, actually. Uh, it is uh, frequently identified as a proto-Southern Cushitic noun suffix, uh, without any justification of why a noun meaning blood should be extended by a semantically indistinct suffix to derive the meaning blood again. Uh, so both the meaning of the suffix and the motivation of its derivation remain obscure so far. And indeed, um, Gérard Philippson, in his critical review of Eret's uh, purported Southern Cushitic loan words set in uh, Mashariki Bantu, uh, Gérard bemoans the absence of a cognate of a Sagame, of the Sagama and Sagame in uh, West Rift Southern Cushitic. Uh, well, the uh, tricky bit here is that indeed the item has probably not been borrowed directly from any proto West Rift uh, item meaning blood, which is Tzede uh, in uh, proto West Rift. So it's not cognate to Sagama or Sagame. But the source for these two terms is rather the proto West Rift verb, tsakam, which uh, means to leak or to trickle constantly, which is a regular durative derivation from the simplex tsak, to leak. And this durative stem has served uh, as basis for two different nominalizations formed by regular Proto-West Drift nominalizing suffixes, namely A, long A and short R, both producing nouns like uh, tsakame and tsakama, referring to the theme of the leakage or the trickling event, that is the liquid dribbling from a leakage constantly, which is precisely what occurs when blood is drawn from the jugular vein of cattle in those communities which bleed their cattle. Uh, in comparison to the reconstruction of a southern Cushitic item such as sac for the meaning blood as propagated uh, repeatedly by Eret, the etymology presented here has several advantages. First of all, it neatly explains the presence of the third consonant M in the Bantu reflexes as retentions of the West Drift durative suffix. Uh, that's uh, one issue. The next uh, advantage is that it also explains the variation in the final vowel A versus E in the two loan word series, Sagama versus Sakame, uh, in reflecting two regular West Rift nominalizing suffixes. And uh, third point is the semantic traces of the cultural context of borrowing that we see in the etymology of these items also lend uh, a higher degree of credibility to the model advocated here, I think. So it also provides a plausible scenario of semantic development couched neatly into the context of borrowing, starting uh, from the initially developed meaning trickle from a leakage, which is specialized to blood trickling from a leakage in the jugular vein of a cow, for example with further stages of semantic generalization to cow's blood used for consumption and animal's blood, ultimately to blood in general, eventually ousting the pre-existing item for blood. So uh, what would be expected as intermediary stages in such a development is the coexistence of various items 
with specialized meanings in the domain of blood. And this is precisely what we find in some of the languages for which more accurate descriptions happen to be available. For example, in uh, J20 languages such as Ruri, uh, which differentiates uh, four terms for blood with Isagama, blood of an animal, versus Amaninga, human blood, versus Orwamba, blood of fish, and Idamu, uh, which represents the general uh, term. Now, furthermore, there is at least one other Eastern Bantu term for blood, which reflects a similar etymology, that is a coinage by de-verbal nominalization based on a verb which reflects the context of drawing blood from an animal, and that is mudacho uh, or mudasso, which I present in the next slide, yeah. So reflexes of this stem, uh, predominantly it is assigned to classes six of four. Uh, these reflexes have a lacustrine eastern Bantu distribution that is zone the J with spread also into neighboring eastern and southern area areas of the zones E, F and uh, G. Yeah. And these terms must have been derived from a widespread proto-Bantu verb Dutch or Las to shoot with a narrow bleed cattle and hit with a missile, uh, which also reflects the conceptualization of blood through the economic practice of drawing blood from cattle. So there are probably no avoidance motives involved in the coinage of this term, contrary to what uh, Bantu lexical reconstructions say uh, on this term. Uh, now there are five uh, further, five different cognate series for blood with restricted spread zones in the Great Lakes area that is Sapi, Amba, Chi, and Ko, and it seems that no etymology is available for none of them so far. Um, reflexes of Sapi are found in uh, zone J, according to Schönbrunn and innovation in in his Great Lakes Bantu group, um, and another route uh, the the next one Amba, uh, which also has a predominantly lacustrine uh, distribution with spread in one neighboring F language, and. Uh, in most of these languages, the item is given as a general term, but the Ruri attestation shows this specialization for blood of fish. Um, the root chi, a uh, next one, uh, is um, attested in a um, yeah, more restricted area J50 and D20 with extension in, uh, no, actually even beyond in K and L. Uh, to the south and southwest, but there's no etymology given so far. However, this route is suspiciously close to a route which has been reconstructed for proto-eastern grass fields as key, same tones, or proto-grass fields Bantu, which is chi, for the meaning blood, which has originally developed from the meaning water via intermediary um, stage of red water in which the modifier red has been dropped. So this is uh, kind of kind of disturbing here. Mm, Ko uh, is uh, quite restricted to J50 and 60 with uh, no etymology given here. And the term, the last on in this list, Fugi or Fuki, has three attestations in uh, J E thirty. Uh, Schönbrunn does not provide any etymology uh, for these, but if one turns to Southern Nilotic, one finds the Datoga item for Yanda, 
which is based on the lexical root forj. And if we undo the general Datoga voicing of plosives, we arrive at an internally reconstructed pre-Datoga form forj, which would be closer formally, but of course Datoga is uh, far in the south and the southern Nilotic languages, which are much closer, that is Kalenjin, they rather have reflexes of another uh, root, which is Karat, so it doesn't really fit here. Uh, finally, there are four cognate series with a restricted distribution in Eastern Bantu, for most of which there is no transparent etymology available either. Uh, there's the root Pome, uh, which is found in Northeastern Tanzania, and uh, one attestation in Mozambique. Etymology is unclear so far, and uh, uh, the Next items, para and bira, that is E70, which is basically Dawida and Sarala, two languages. Mm, yeah, Eret and Nurse attribute them to their Taita Cushitic A or B, that is a hypothetical extinct Southern Cushitic Donor language, although um, the only testimony they invoke for the southern Cushitic link is quite weak. Uh, that's the Ma'a word Mbukwe, red ochre, uh, which is glossed as red soil in uh, Martin's uh, work on Ma'a. Then there is this Danda, another item restricted to G60 and F20, no etymology available so far. And of course, Damu, uh, which has an etymology borrowed, it's borrowed from Arabic and spread into Swahili and through the diffusion of Swahili, probably also beyond into the other languages uh, given here. Okay, we skip the Southwestern Bantu and there are some very isolated uh, items with no obvious uh, yeah, affiliations possible and we turn to the conclusion. What I want to say in conclusion is uh, yeah, raising a couple of general issues which relate to semantics, uh, to historical reconstruction and uh, yeah, there are uh, conceptual differentiations being made in the domain of blood according to source and function. That is, we have differentiations for human blood, animal blood, blood, blood is which blood which is consumed, and uh, the a generic term for blood. And these distinctions are reflected in lexicalization across East Bantu as occasionally attested. So we have seen that Ruri different, differentiates four terms for blood. Uh, I've already mentioned them, but another instance can be found in the Wanga variety of Luhya, for example, which has three terms for blood, Amatsai, uh, which is a hyponym, obviously, and um, with uh, two further terms which seem to be synonymous uh, for blood drawn from a live cow for food, amabanga and amalasire. Uh, Nyanja and Chewa have terminological distinctions for human blood versus animal's blood versus animal's blood which is consumed. And Chuabo has two items for quite another type of semantic differentiation, that is uh, the general term blood and another one, uh, gingiva, I think that is a blood from uh, the gums uh, around the teeth. Uh, uh, Digo has three blood terms, mlazo, damu and manza. Damu is a recent borrowing from Swahili, which seems to supersede the original generic term mlazo and manza belongs to the hunting register as a term which is used 
by hunters when uh, an animal has been shot. Uh, last in this list is Shambhala, which has obviously three terms. Um, Pome is the general term, and Mulasho refers to animal blood, which is preserved after slaughtering an animal and uh, which is used to prepare a blood meal. And Sakame uh, refers specifically to human blood, which has been spilt leaving stains all over, for example, from an injury or from nosebleed. And this is particularly interesting since it might point to residual semantics in Sakame of the original no notion of trickling and leakling, leaking inherited from the assumed source item Tsakame. It seems that semantic differentiation in the domain of blood has not sufficiently been considered in existing narratives about the linguistic and economic history of the Rift and East Africa generally, probably due to the fact that it is largely underreported for many languages. Uh, with respect to individual uh, terms and their etymologies, the concept blood is sensitive to cultural um, restrictions or taboos, which can have an effect on lexicalization and uh, differentiation, of course, and replacement, finally. And replacement motivated by avoidance must have occurred repeatedly, as already mentioned, and manifest in the etymologies of these uh, terms Magila and Magadi, possibly there are, there are also others. Uh, but economic motivations also play a crucial role in lexical innovation. The practice of drawing blood from cattle must have instigated uh, this. And when it comes to borrowing, we can see that prominent economic functions such as the consumption of animals' blood can have an upgrading effect on its borrowability. Um, as I've tried to outline for the cases of the uh, Southern Cushitic sourced items, Sagama and Sakame, borrowing might entail complex semantic shifts, which could actually be retraced in a synthesis of linguistic and cultural reconstruction. And uh, so cognitive models for the renovation of a term for blood can be differentiated for their underlying motivation. As for avoidance, we have seen metaphor based on color, magadi from uh, palm oil, and possibly the Eastern uh, grass fields uh, um, attestation key from red water. And uh, there's, of course, metonymy uh, for those terms which are based on the verb to avoid. Uh, for economic uh, differentiation, terms for the meaning um, fresh blood drawn from cattle or from a cow are either derived by metonymy based on the action of shooting uh, the bleeding arrow at the cow, that is, for example, mudacho or mudaso, or it's based on the image of the blood trickling or sprinkling from the vein, as we have, we have seen in Sakame and Sagama. Well, uh, as for visualization, it would have been nice to plot the distributions of these terms in a map. I have started doing this by expanding on the crude map supplied by Waltz, since it seems that the Bantu map marker does not run on Microsoft. But if you have suggestions for this, it, they would be very welcome. And um, for open ends and gaps, does anybody have any idea about the etymology of these uh, items, the East Bantu items, Pome, Para, Obira, and Danda, and the Lacustrine items, Sapi, Ambachi, 
call Fugi. If so, I would be happy to hear from you. Thank you very much. That's it. Thank you very much, Roland, for your presentation. I think we can now begin the question and answer section. The question and answer section will be open to voice questions as well as written ones. If you would like to ask a question, just raise your hands using the nonverbal controls present underneath the participant panel, and then I will send a request to unmute. If you prefer to ask a written question, that's also still possible. You can do so using the chat module, uh, and I will read out the question. Please remember that the webinars are being recorded so that if you ask a question, this will be part of the recording and will be released on the YouTube channel. I'm gonna start in the chat because I already see some things coming up here. Um, so I see first a comment from Andrew Harvey who says regarding the, uh, yeah, the POME uh, yeah. form, he thinks that POME is a relatively widespread route for exude, like Ihanzu, and to come out, which he thinks is a meaning which exists in Southern Africa. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, that's just uh, to uh, clarify. It was um, exude. Oh, exude. Uh, yeah, which Ex is Sorry. like to uh, to give out or to discharge. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. Now I get the point. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 This uh, this makes perfect sense. Thank you very much. So uh, yes, yeah, so this gives us another uh, subcontinent of meaning. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much. Um, so, and then I see a comment from Bonnie Sands, uh, who says that Sovotswana languages tend to have a polysemy between money and blood, as do many Khoisan languages. Khoisan languages often have a distinct term for bleeding from the nose versus other types of bleeding. It yeah. seems that shamans in trance often have nosebleeds, so there is a cultural importance there. And she also says this is a fascinating talk and of great importance for historical linguistics generally, given the weight that is given to Swadesh items. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Bonnie. Yes, I've seen this uh, polysemy of money and blood. Um, maybe I should check more of these uh, uh, items which have a vague etymology. Yeah, thank you anyway. Um, yeah, I see a question in the chat from Alice Mitchell. She says, uh, thanks, Rola. This is a great topic. She is curious about avoidance of the lexical item blood and had some questions about this. Uh, do we know of any synchronic avoidance of the word blood or of avoidance of this particular word in other parts of the world? Well, not, uh, well, I don't, but um... Of course, when it comes to avoidance, uh, we can look at uh, Tatoga for an avoidance term in the in the avoidance register. But of course, this is an another another type of uh, avoidance when um, blood is uh, actually shunned. And um, I have not done any uh, research on this. Uh, um, ethnological aspect. I have taken it over from uh, the research of um, what's it uh, of uh, Bastin and uh, Bostoon who claim this for these uh, much wider uh, w these terms which are much wider spread across the the Bantu area the, the the items which are derived from to avoid or from the verb to avoid or from uh, palm oil. So uh, actually, yeah, I'm, I can't really give a very uh, satisfying answer. Oh, I see, you just looked up the avoidance variant. Yeah, that's, that's very disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Then I see a raised hand from Martin, so I'll ask him to unmute. Can I unmute? Yes. Um, on this last uh, question, uh, well, Iraq has data, redness, as a word that they can use for blood if they don't want to use blood. Oh, yeah. So I touched blood, I touched redness. And Ronald, I love this uh, presentation and I have to look up so many things before I can uh, be of help. 
yeah, yeah, okay. Thank you. Does anybody know about the, uh, this Bantu map marker and whether it has some application uh, on Microsoft or is, is it still maintained? Uh, it would have been nice to uh, plot this, even uh, blowing the, the plotting up in certain areas. But of course, this will confront us with uh, these um, um, semantic problems of how to display uh, the semantic specializations, of course. Does anybody know about the Bantu map marker? Let's give it a few minutes, see if anyone responds. In the mm. meantime, I will um, read out uh, Andrew Harvey's comment, who says, culturally, though not lexically, he thinks that the spilling of blood is a major taboo in Gorwa Iraku. There are big fines for offenses which involve the spilling of blood. Yes, this is the meta uh, complex, I think, or metimani. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Yes, that is on, uh, on your question, Roland, from the best yes. map maker. Mac map maker. <laughs> 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 I will uh, I'll ask Tilo. What I know is that Tilo made this this uh, piece of software. Yes. In uh, in DOS, so uh, you it should be possible to still use it in your DOS prompt within uh, Microsoft Windows. Wow. Uh, and he stopped uh, working on it a uh, long time yeah. ago. But I'll yeah. ask him, maybe somebody else has, uh, con because I know other people continue to, to use it in Lyon. Maybe, maybe somebody has done something about it. But I think if you, if you try the, the DOS prompt within, yeah, it um, might work. Okay, then I have to figure out how to get to the DOS prompt in, <laughs> in these machines, but that might not be such a big problem no yeah but i've problem. seen a, a web presence of of it and one could download it but uh it doesn't seem to work on microsoft yeah but anyway thank you thank you martin alice also weighs in on the discussion and says that she's about to attempt making a map using an r package called uh, link typology but she will let you know how she gets on Okay, wow, great. Yes, thank you, Alice. And then I see a raised hand from Bonnie Sand. Hi, I just um, looking at a paper by Jerome Lewis on the term Aquila. Here, I'll put it in the link here. This is in a uh, pygmy group. And this uh, word term means blood, but he says it also means menstruation, taboo, hunter's meat, animals power to harm humans and particular dangers to human reproduction production health and sanity so that just it's another example of how this term blood is not such a simple uh, yeah. single meaning and it's probably been way under documented yes yeah so this is a nice example then of uh, of polysemy and a quite la quite large range which would uh, be the well, yeah, uh, which is kind of mirror image to the this, um, these specializations that we find in some of these languages that I had cited, the lexical specifications or specializations rather for different types of blood. So it's just interesting within the Sututswana case, we seem hey. to have that comparison with the Khoisan languages in the same area. I oh, wonder yeah. if we've got, you know, pygmy sort of influence on the... Yeah. Oh yeah, um, semant lexical semantics. It's, it's just a fascinating thing to explore. Yeah. Yes, Jerome Lewis. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. Today. Okay, so thank you. This, I think those are all the questions and comments for today. I'd like to take this opportunity to remind everyone that recordings of all of the presentations in the Rift Valley webinar series can be found on the Rift Valley Network YouTube page. And entries for each presentation are added to the Rift Valley bibliography. Looking ahead, the next presentation in the webinar series will be given on Wednesday, October 7th, by Augustino Amos. I would like to thank Olan again for his presentation and everyone else for participating today. And I hope to see you again at our next webinar.